My name is Odion Ikuga and I'm excited about the opportunity to reach you today on a very incredible day and it's the day of the Lord. It's the day that the Lord has made and we are glad. I'm excited about the opportunity to do what I've always loved to do to witness to Jesus essentially specifically to preach this gospel of the kingdom I'm fascinated about the opportunity to go in the name of the Lord and promote the agenda of Christ on the earth now much of what we have embraced today as the gospel under um, the auspices of the re fastest growing religion in the world Christianity much of it has been error yes yes it's very easy to fall into error it's very easy to do iniquity today and because uh, the spirit of god will actually want us to come into the truth he's inspiring me right about now i really could not wait until i got home before uh, i actually came out here to make this particular recording but what we have to do is what we have to do. The Lord is inspiring us now. And I, I will just spend the next two minutes to come into all that he is saying. And there are many things that he is specific about, especially as it is tied to how we have chosen to govern ourselves, how we have chosen to run our lives. God is very much concerned with the day-to-day -day going on with his people. And many of us will look around the world today and say, wow, we are in the end time. Uh, there's so much wickedness. There's, there's so much. Uh, 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 there's false, the rise of false prophets. Many of us will see that there are rumors of war. There's so much that's happening in the world today. Permit me to tell you, uh, God has not planned to allow the world go the way it is going without His intervention. His intervention is shrouded around the preaching. When I mean preaching, I mean the practicing and the teaching of the most important message that the people of God, the people of the world will ever hear. It's actually the message that God selected his church for. There is something that the church must do in the world. Uh, God sent us into the world to do something and uh, I'm glad that he had inspired me to bring down the mystery of the laundry men in this particular place. Uh, I'm trusting him today that he will open us into his agenda much of what we are having in the world today is a conquest between good and evil we are in the middle of a battle between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness and we must understand the rules of engagement we must understand the terms of our warfare we must understand the principles of warfare the principles of securing the victory that is already ours most and most importantly, we must come to understand the agenda that Jesus, our King, has for us, the Church of Christ, in every nation. Now, we are at, uh, at a season of our election. There's so much happening. Yesterday, we had um, INEC. Uh, they are, we've had them postpone an election that they have been planning for for four years. Now, this is normal practice, but we must realize that the arm of flesh will always fail. It is God trying to tell us that we have depended on the arm of flesh, and He's trying to remind the church to return to her work. We have an agenda in the world, and our agenda is not to join the system and promote their government. Our agenda is to proclaim the kingdom of God. Our agenda is to ensure that we have effected the prophetic migration of nations from the boat state of being to the sheep state of being and it's shrouded around their response to our message. We have a message in the world. We have a message to the nations. I'm talking to the Church of Christ in every community. I'm talking to the Church of Christ in Nigeria. I'm talking to the Church of Christ in America, the Church of Christ in Canada. I'm talking to the Church of Christ, the body of Christ. Listen to me, we have a message to the nations and the message is shrouded around the propagation of the kingdom of God. Many of us will say, wow, is this guy coming with the kingdom of God? What does it mean? I thought the kingdom of God is where we go to. The kingdom of God is something to come. Listen to me. 
when I was telling you something just now about the terms of engagement, you must understand what these things are. The kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of light, the mystery of Christ, the mystery of godliness, and the mystery of iniquity. Righteousness. We must understand what all these things mean. We must understand what covenants. We must understand what altars. We must understand the, the, what sin has done and we must come to understand what the cross means. You see, since the fall of man, the devil has secured governance over the earth and his power over the degenerate man, his power over the Adamic man itself, the flesh. And that's where the frequency of the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and pride of life thrives. Man, man has always wanted that place of dominion that God created him for. And under the authority of self and flesh, man can only try to grow up in the dark. And this is the, the spirit behind what has become one of the most prolific political ideologies that has uh, taken over the nations. The, 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 the devil has uh, inspired his minions to come with the democratic thought, democracy and the rule of law, is actually to spawn a net in the nations and bring for the person of Antichrist, the person of the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, bring for him a committee of nations. And that's what we are doing now, that's what we are yoked into because the mystery of iniquity is operating in the nations. The mystery of iniquity is operating and demons have influenced everybody to go after it even if we look carefully we raise our head off the, the vehicle that they have given us and see the kind of life that they are living we will see that they are preparing us for a lawless society when i mean lawless society i mean the societies that man has used legislation to go against the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Jesus is king and he has selected the people through whom he will advance this mystery that he has reserved for the people of every tongue, tribe, nation, ethnicity, race, language and creed is the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. And this is exactly what he wants to achieve. He wants Christ to live in you today and demonstrate and teach the kingdom of God. What God is planning to do right about now, and this is what this is our only fascination. God has it in plan to use nations to promote the authority of Christ. That means if your nation is broken, your system is broken, if the institutions are weak, I want you to rejoice because all you need to do is to believe in what I am saying as a matter of national policy. You must make it a policy in your nations to obey Jesus. You must make it a policy in your nations to submit to righteousness. And I will talk to the Church of Christ. God did not send you to practice democracy with the world. God sent you into the world to promote the government of Jesus Christ. And until the government of Jesus Christ, the government of righteousness is installed in the nations of the world, until the nations implement the government that is promoted with the authority of Christ for the obedience of faith to all nations, the nations will continue to suffer corruption and the brunt of the leadership of self. I must tell you, and I will say it with all sense of courage and boldness, democracy is preparing you for the reign of the Antichrist. The only man that you see your politicians modeling is the person of the Antichrist. It's a lie of Satan meant to deceive you. And I want you not to be deceived. I want the scales that the spirit of the age has put in the heart of many to fall off your eyes. I want you to fall off your mind. So instead of you to be looking for the rule of law and due process, I want you to be looking for the reign of righteousness. I want you to be looking for the reign of righteousness. I want you to be looking for the reign of Christ. Until Christ is king in your land, there is nothing good that will come out of your nation. And this is a message.
message that we are telling to the people of Nigeria. You have chosen to go by the way of democracy. You have chosen to go by the path of the Americans. And permit me to tell you, what you have chosen has not brought you together as one nation. What you have chosen has brought wars down your throat, division, strife, corruption. What you have chosen has allowed for the proliferation of deception. Yes, what you have chosen has ruined your nation. You have wasted your, 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 your land. What you have chosen has militated against God's plan to enforce his leadership for the nations. And it is time to come out of it. It's time to come out of it. It's time to wake up, realize yourself, and come out of it. Why? Why? Because this thing is operating under the spirit of Cain. It's time for us to begin to contemplate a government model that is issued out of the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the Church of Christ must be the ace, the vehicle through which God is communicating this. This is why he called us the royal priesthood. We are the ones that are supposed to break into the holies of holies and come out with revelation so that the problems of the nations can be solved. The problem with the world today is that they have rejected Jesus. They have rejected the fountain of living water. They have rejected the solution, the king that has all the plans, all the solution. He has the ideal city in his heart. The king has the ideal plans and systems and institutions that will establish justice and righteousness and fairness in the communities. Listen to me, this is not what we will wait for. This is why the church is in the building. Jesus has established his church so that we can make disciples of all the nations. There's potential to make disciples of all the nations. There's potential to make a disciple out of Nigeria, especially as our systems are broken, especially as corruption has ruined the land, especially as wickedness has taken reign, especially as the righteous, the hand of the righteous is now bent towards iniquity. Because listen to me, it is now become practically impossible for one to do business in Nigeria without compromising. And this is where we have found ourselves because the scepter of wickedness is resting on our Lord. Church of Jesus Christ, your inheritance is Nigeria. God put you in Nigeria so that you will make sure that Nigeria becomes a sheep, so that Nigeria will find her place in the Committee of Nations during the millennial reign of Jesus. Christian Church will never tell you this, but you need to listen to me. You have a work to do in the nations, which is essentially to make a disciple out of Nigeria, to help Nigeria find her identity inside God trans dispensational agenda for the nations of the earth is still God's ultimate agenda to lead the nations and this is why he has set his church in the building we must begin to wake up to the responsibility to promote the government of Jesus Christ I'm saying it now that it is important people are going to their polling stations and even when the arm of flesh keeps failing the Christian church has not woken up to realize that they have eaten pigs they are eating food for pigs. The Christian church have not realized that Christianity and democracy is the iron and the clay, or the Mary, Mary, uh, Mary clay and the mingled iron that Prophet Daniel was talking about, the beast system, the feet of the beast system. We have not woken up to that. But you see, until we wake up to that, we will continue to defer the day of the manifestation of sons of God. We will continue to push it to another day. We will continue to say Jesus cannot come in the flesh. We will continue to say the kingdom of God is for another day. Listen to me. The kingdom is for another day. That is our ultimate inheritance. But the kingdom of God is for today. We are supposed to wield the kingdom of God. We are supposed to wield the authority of Christ. Essentially so that the Lord will get his harvest. What the Lord needs today is sheep. He doesn't want goats. They are goats. They are actually goats before him. Because they have not given him an opportunity to reign in their land. They have wished the reign of Jesus away. Some of them are foolish enough to say it matters not who is president, but Jesus is king. Hello! Jesus is not king until he is obeyed. Jesus is not king until he is obeyed. As a matter of national policy, 
This is why the early church were all killed and martyred because they lived with so much passion. They lived with a deep sense of conviction to advance the reign of Jesus. Jesus is worthy to be believed and obeyed. Not as the one that started Christianity, no. As the one that has given commandments. Jesus has given commandments. And if any nation wants to be subscribed into his agenda to reign, you have seen how his government was during his earthly ministry. You have seen how that government was, where people were hungry, he gave them food. There were welfare plans and packages. There was health plans, he healed their sick. There was life insurance plan, he raised their dead. Listen to me, if you believe what I'm saying, Nigeria, you will position yourself for the ministry of manifestation of sons of God. You will position yourself to be amongst the nation that will live to bring fulfillment to prophetic scripture. I, I don't care much about what we think we're doing in the church. We must live to bring fulfillment to prophetic scripture as a matter of national policy. And this is why we are alive. This is why God has sent us here and we must give Nigerians the opportunity to come into this hope that God has. It's a hope of a better world today. And it's also the hope of our place in the coming millennia. Jesus is coming to reign for a thousand years. But this message is what will prepare the nations for the reign of Jesus. Just as democracy and the rule of the lawless one is preparing the nations for the reign of the Antichrist. That is why it is leaving Antichrist societies in its trail. That's why it's leaving wars. It's leaving people that are reprobate in its trails. I want you to go and look at the number one democratic nation in the planet and see how confused that they are. See how bereft of solutions that they have become. See how racist they have become. See how they are fighting and killing themselves. See how they now murder babies innocent children. See how the blood of innocent children is resting on their hands. And listen, that's where they are leading you to Nigeria. That's where they are leading you to Nigeria. So you need to raise up your head and see where you are going to, so that you know whether you should start deciding whether to follow Jesus now or you want to go to that place. Listen to me, cosmopolitan Nigeria is going to be a Nigeria that you will regret. Cosmopolitan Nigeria. When I mean cosmopolitan, I want you to go and check what the word cosmopolitan means. It's going to be a Nigeria that you will regret. You will regret ever being alive if you see that Nigeria. And you will imagine what hell will be like if that kind of Nigeria will happen. I'm talking about the Nigeria where the gay man has his right to be a Christian. Yes. And they will bend your hand, you mega church owner. They will bend your hand with the law of the land to ensure that you obey their whims and caprices. To ensure that you are bent to rot iniquity. You don't want to wait for that Nigeria where corruption becomes normal. It's already happening now, but this is, a, this is a child's play. If we don't turn back from this democracy and the rule of law, if we don't turn back from Christianity, because Christianity has not pursued this, Christianity has wired the people and aligned them with the system because our Christian church owners, they are afraid to be under the rot of the law of the land. But well, listen to me. God left an opening with democracy. Democracy is not a monarchical system of government. Democracy is a system that allows freedom of expression. If you are preaching the gospel of the kingdom, you even have a better opportunity to promote democracy. You have a, you have a, I beg your pardon, you have a better opportunity to promote your message in a democracy. Listen to me. It just shows that you have become someone who has thrown away the gold that God has given you. You know what I mean? That the government of Jesus Christ is gold. We have the opportunity to present the biggest expression of the love of God. God's desire to use nations to show his love in the committee of nations. Nigeria has suffered enough. It is time for them to come under the love that God has to show. God has something in his booty for the nations. It's a bait that he has put in the hook that he has put in the hands of the church. It's an incredible opportunity to position yourself as the Lord's holy habitation. Nigeria, you have an opportunity to fulfill the prophecies that have gone ahead of you. 
if you believe the gospel of the kingdom. You have an opportunity to be exalted and be glorified if you embrace the reign of righteousness. You have an opportunity to be glorified in the committee of nations. You have an opportunity to defy all natural laws. You have an opportunity to make your plan for national health care insurance a thing of the past. You have an opportunity to have an educational system that will have two children taught of the Lord that will bring that will naturally bring prosperity to the nations. You have an opportunity to enjoy divine defense. You are going to enjoy the defense that heaven deploys on territories. That's what you stand to reject if you reject the preaching of the kingdom. And not only will you face trials and torments and pain and misery just as you are facing now, you won't find your place in the coming millennia. Listen to me. There's an opportunity for Nigerians to sit down and embrace Jesus, not as the one that started Christianity. Embrace Jesus as the king that is worthy to be believed and obeyed. I will tell you, the glory of the latter house that is tied to the temples of God will become a national experience when you have allowed yourself the space and rights that Christ needs. You have allowed Christ to live his life as a Nigerian. We are talking about allowing Christ to live as a major, as a matter of national policy. Even the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea in our land, every creature will rejoice. Why? Because the reign of Jesus that they are hoping for, they will see it happen in our land. The people who will come and repair our ruined cities, they are coming when you believe. You will see them repair your ruined cities. You will see them establish institutions. And you will see them bring all the things that have brought your communities and cities to ill repute and shame. You will see it become a thing of the past. This is what you have to embrace now. And this is what I am inspired to just deliver. And this I have done for the love of God. For the love of the church that should go back to her mission to the nations and for the love of the nations that are oppressed by the devil and waiting for a hope of a better society. I've done what I do. This thing that I've done, I've done it in the name of the Lord. And the people said, Amen. My name is Odion Ikoga. Until I see you again, I want you to have a sober reflection on what you have heard. Okay? Bye now.